What is going on everybody, Lukey Boy here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking over Dogami. I have meant to Dogama, Dogami. Well, I don't know, people say different things to me. It's Dogami, but I guess maybe depending where you are, you say it differently. We're gonna be going over this project because for me, it's actually one of the ones I've been looking at more recently in terms of obviously the NFT market has been quiet as of say June, 2022. Um, and so I've been focusing on obviously like the Tezos blockchain a little bit more um, because we've obviously got time to you know inspect and look at those things when things are quiet, yeah? And not so sort of ongoing with sort of the bull market where you're pretty much consumed all the time. And so let's just sort of go over this project, the reasons why I like it. And the reasons why I feel that in the future this will be a potential blue chip, actually. Um, not right now. On Tezos Network, I would say it is, but obviously that volume-wise is it's pretty pretty low because uh, obviously the Tezos Network is not really integrated with like, OpenSea and stuff. Obviously, Solana recently got integrated with it and a lot of projects popped and picked up from there because the, obviously the exposure to the market is drastically increased, yeah, with the amount of people that can obviously you know, buy and sell. Um, so. At the moment, I would say it's a blue chip in terms of the Tezos network, but ultimately it's not really got that exposure yet that it needs to really become what you would call like um, a blue chip in terms of the overall NFT market. So what is Dogme ultimately? You know, I'm not gonna go into too much detail and bore you too much, but ultimately it's like a Tomagotchi pet, right? You know, it's a dog, right? So you adopt, raise, and earn. So if you look down here, you basically get a dog like this, different obviously uh, rarities like you would in most things. They're gonna have integrated AR and uh, interactive game. So it'll be like a mix between real life and obviously in-game sort of playing with your pet and stuff like that. Uh, you can earn actual dogger tokens. So they have their own token, which is obviously gonna be used within their ecosystem. It's also like airdrops to holders and various things. You can stake it, all that kind of thing. You can obviously use it in game to buy, sell, and do all that kind of thing. Um, and obviously I'm not gonna click the video, but pretty cool video, pretty cool art and you know, look for it. It's quite quite a slick look in my opinion, which is nice because there are many projects that feel like they don't have that and they end up having to rebrand or something and it costs a lot of money and it sort of means that the project then kind of goes on a little bit of a back foot while they're rebranding and that. And yeah, it's okay to do that in the early, because you know, we're in the early days of the NFT space, but really you want to obviously find something that's all here. Obviously, if you want to go and check the website out, it's uh, dogme.com. Um, and again, it's just showing you that it's you know on Tezos Network, which is nice because the actual fees are very low. So you can see here, low gas fees. It costs about a couple of pennies pretty much it's basically no money but you have to have a little bit you know to actually do obviously some transactions right but ultimately there's no gas fee like you would get on ethereum so it's really good because yes there's going to be fees to sell it like royalty but you don't have that gas to be buying stuff like that which is great obviously you don't really want that do you i would go into the white paper ultimately i'm not going to uh you can go ahead and do that in your own leisure if you want the team you know really kind of like established and well-known people again might go into that too much they've also got backing from um, Ubisoft, there we go. They've invested in the sandbox and have land in that. So that obviously you can take your dog into that world and various things like that. So that's really, really cool. Again, you know, not gonna go into that. So let's just go up to the very top. So, you know, in terms of what they have, if you wanna actually see what they look like, they actually have their mar a marketplace on here and actually also on the Tezos network, or Tezos are objects, which is here on object.com. And here the floor price is 310, here the floor price is 300. So just, just so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, you don't have to list here, of course, you can list uh, over here, but it's just an option, right? Which is sometimes good because you can just sort of see what the prices are. Sometimes these are more expensive, sometimes they're cheaper on the actual website. Again, you've got my puppies. I've actually got three of the generation twos or version twos. Now, I don't believe there's a massive difference between generation twos and ones, uh, or alpha and beta, whatever you wanna call it, because these are actually different breeds of dogs. So if you can kind of see what I mean by that, like they have these different breeds here, but actually, of course, there's a lot of different dog breeds, right? And people potentially wanna have the one that they either own or like the most. Um, and so in terms of like the pricing, it's actually, it was actually more expensive to mint the generation twos because they probably launched at probably a, a far cheap, a far too cheap price Initially, it was 50 Tezos for the generation ones for these, which at the time was say, you know, three, four dollars. So that's a, that's to say, what was it? 50, 50 yeah, it was like a couple, it's like $250. Quite low in terms of if you were looking at an Ethereum based you know, NFT, it would be, might be 0 0.1, which is a bit more. So it wasn't, you know, really it should have been priced maybe at like 75, which is not massively different, but I can see why they've increased the price um, to about 300 something dollars. This is about, you know, the going rate. Uh, obviously, some are more expensive and some are cheaper, right? But, you know, the sort of going rate. But it may have been because it was on the Tezos network and they wanted exposure. 
And once they obviously have that initial investment, that in capital injection that they can use to obviously steamroll the business, they're not so worried about selling out potentially, uh, even though it sold out completely super quick. Like every, it, they were all white lists. You have to have a white list, which I really like because there's no none of that kind of crap that you get. The floor price was always high. I knew I had a white list for this and I knew that it would be like instant profit pretty much. So if you can see here, these are actually the boxes for the generation two, slight premium on the generation ones. And I minted mine for like 200, uh, $300. And this is now worth about $660, something. So maybe even more, $680, $690, just depends on the price of Tezos. Um, and you could just go ahead and obviously sell if you wanted. You could only get one, which is also nice because you're not gonna have, potentially have people that are looking to sell. There's, le there's more potential that people will keep than sell because if you've got two and you can make instant profit on one, it's normally a good thing to do to reduce your exposure, to reduce your risk. If you just have one, yeah, you can go ahead and still do that, but you may go, oh, you know what? I still like to hold it. I like the project and I want something. So I do like that. And the thing I like about this project the most is that in this cycle, in this bull market to bear market cycle we've had in NFTs, these have not moved at all. Like the, the floor price, obviously it's moved, right? But it's not moved like you've seen on um, you know, any of these, like, you know, this one's kind of not actually, I was just looking at this the other day, but this, this went to 9.9 ETH and it kind of got as low as like two. So that's a huge drop, right? Even on, you know, not that this is a really established project, but even board eights went, went from 140 to 70. There's some decent, there's still 50% or something, whatever it is. And on Dogami, it really hasn't moved. The, the lows are about 250, the highs are about 350. So there's less upside potential because in the bull market, this also wasn't, you know, I think the floor price was somewhere around here in the bull market. So actually it wasn't huge, you know, as in it, ha it didn't like have that full kind of like lift off that you might see on OpenSea with a lot of projects. But also the downside risk is, is reduced as well. And the reason for that is, is the volume, because if you look at the volume, because obviously Tezos has a lot less volume. Um, if you click on Dogme here, you can go ahead and see even now how many are getting sold in a, in what time frame. So this is five hours ago. One, you know, how many in the last day? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Nine have sold in the last day, but in terms of a full day, obviously if you want to look from yesterday, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14. So there's 14, yeah, and my, most NFT collections on OpenSea, if, you, if you're seeing low volume like that, they're usually not like what you would call the best projects going, right? It doesn't mean they're not, right? It's because obviously you don't know the future, yeah? Like the bear market can do a lot of things. It can put the prices quite low on things. So it's not necessarily going to mean that the price of things is relevant in terms of how good the project is. You know, in some contacts, yes, it does because the more expensive stuff requires a higher entry fee. So you're probably going to get less sort of sellers in terms of weak hands because if you're if you're new to nfts you're probably not going to be spending five to ten grand on an nft for your first purchase you're probably going to buy something cheap but if you're doing that and you're new newbies are more prone to emotional decisions which can cause the prices of things to potentially go down a lot in a bear market because people are going to sell a lot because they're new and they, don't, they haven't got that full kind of depth of understanding. So I kind of understand it from that point. But ultimately, there's not a lot of volume on this. And it's because it's on Tezos, right? And, and this could have easily launched on, you know, Ethereum, for example, but it didn't. And this is this is what I would call one of the more blue chip ones on this project. This is more of a generic project. And it's basically been up here for months and months and months. It's normally up here in the top handful for months. So it's basically the best little ongoing project. Otters is actually a nice one. I quite like that one. Uh, and I'm kind of like researching a lot of these because my ultimate play here is that um, actually I feel that once this actually goes on to OpenSea, let's say it even takes six months, they've got a lot more of their roadmap. So if you actually go up to here, because um, right now the game is not out, right? So, you know, if you have stuff like this, uh, Q2 is kind of like now, but they're going to be launching a lot of this soon. Um, you know, play to earn game, beta launch. So if it comes, if it comes out around here and you've got a launch of the Dogme mobile game and it comes out on OpenSea as well, you, I could see a huge pump leading up to that launch. And obviously, it's quite vague with the dates, but you know, even that that was Q4, but end of the year, which is still six months away, which is fine, perfect. Um, you know, real estate agency development of the Petverse. Basically, it's just going to be a sort of MMO, although it's not going to be an MMO, but you get what I mean. So it's going to be like more of an open world. You can have your own little doghouse. You can get it out. You get tokens. You can breed. There's breeding involved. There's basically everything that a real dog can do. And um, yeah, it's just really interesting. So again, like the staking is not crazy. If you go on a staking, it's just a flexible 22% AR, ARP, APR, or I read it wrong. Um, you know, not to say this is going to like go to the moon or anything, but I like that it's not huge, like 4,000%, right? Or 400%. Because obviously there's more, it's just not good to be having that. You saw what happened with Luna, right? You know, fixed APRs and all that kind of thing. 
and it you know goes down. Yeah, that's still decently high, but it's not. It's nowhere near what you, you can see on some of the projects, right? You know, if you're looking at the token itself since it came out, um, let's just go to three months. I'm not sure how long, but obviously on launch, yeah, it's going to be a little bit popped up. You know, um, so you know I wouldn't worry too much about the the kind of highs there because that's normally where it's sort of finding its feet. Obviously, the, the the overall market's been coming down, uh, and it's here, and really it's it's at about fifteen cents, and the highs have been around. Double, so it's down fifty percent. Now, if you actually look at some of the other projects, they're they're down like ninety percent. You know, I'm not even lying to you. If you want to go and have a look here with my fat head, you know, it's stuff like the Sandbox, which is to me like a really long-term legitimate project. You know, their token has come down to the bottom ninety percent. So ultimately, you know, if you want to look at the dog meters here, yeah, it's going to be coming down because of everything else is coming down. So that's fair enough. Like even like ApeCoin. You know, look at ape coin. You know, everyone, you know, board ape yacht club, eighty percent. So you know, not to say that's gonna, it's necessarily gonna be like coming down again, um, and it will fall in line with the rest. It could do, but you know, just looking roughly, the volume is kind of been kind of neg negligible because it's not that hype and big. So maybe that's why there's not a huge amount of volume going through it, so it's not affected by buyers and selling as much the pressure wise. Unlike stuff like ape, where the, obviously the volume's a lot higher, so there's more potential for downside. There's more potential for upside because of the amount of money flowing through it. Um, so moving on, the reason I like this again is because it it just this is really clean and in a, innovative in terms of it's a simple concept, right? It's something that's been around forever, like having well forever, like having a Tamagotchi, you know, Pokemon Go, because it's going to be kind of like a hybrid mix of all of those kind of games. You know, you'll be able to take your dog out in the real world in like a Pokemon Go, Go style um, ga game and actually like interact with other dogs and you'll get rewards, you'll get NFTs for those rewards. You can go and, you know, you have to go and take your dog for a walk, for example. And, you know, some people might love that. Some people might hate that, of course. <laughs> it just depends on what you like. But, you know, you saw what happened with Pokemon Go. Yeah, it got a lot of people actually in, interested in doing stuff that they pretty much probably didn't even I think they would do. I mean, I remember... Me and my brother on a Friday night, instead of getting beers, we were going down, like looking for Pokemon because we're sad. Ultimately, we're sad. And I was literally 26, so it was not like I was a kid. But <laughs> it was so fun. I loved it. Like we were going, just walking to like random places. And it was just like, you know, it was just, it's just different. Yeah. And, and you know, who knows, like, what will happen in the long term? Because, you know, they've got to be, you know, relevant, right? Like, Pokemon Go obviously just sort of was really, really big. And then it kind of chilled off. Not to say that there was an opportunity in that, right? Because even if, if Dogami popped up and, you know, it was released on OpenSea, everyone started playing it, you know, it got more hype and NFTs had their next bull market and bull market went sort of parabolic a bit. Like even if it was a year's time, I could see these Dogamis being between one, like, sorry, not one, but well, at least one, one to five ETH, uh, potentially even like say three to five ETH um, because the exposure on such a clean project, I mean, they're, they're partnered with Gap very recently and they're going to be having like clothes and stuff like that, that they're going to be able to airdrop to their holders. Uh, and it's going to basically be you know, wearables within the game. And those wearables give you perks within the game. Um, I don't exactly know what the perks are. They haven't disclosed that. But you know, that is something that of interest. Um, I haven't actually got Discord up, but they've got about 115,000 Discord members. Considering they're on Tezos, and they're not in the public eye as much. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about it. You go on YouTube, there's like 10 videos on Dogme. That's, that's it. And very, you know, there's hardly anything really of quality on there. And so it's just really interesting to see that it's kind of not really exposed, but actually it's such a cool project. Um, and I just, for me, it's like, you know, the reason I love it is because I love the idea, the simple and addictive potentially idea of how the game could play out. I also love that, uh, where is Dogme here? that the downside and upside are not as extreme, which is nice because you don't want to all, always have money in volatile assets. You know, in theory, people say NFTs are volatile, but well, this is literally not being volatile at all, at all, um, which is pretty like nice to have, you know, to, to know that it's not going to, for example, this floor wouldn't, wouldn't suddenly crash. I've never, it, literally this floor, you'll see it jump about $40 different in a day, potentially. So it might, it might be 283 and it goes to 300, it might be 315 back to free, like it doesn't, you know, it's not really moving at all because there's not a lot of buying and selling going on. And, and a lot of people don't seem to want to be, you know, be selling because if you look here, there's 200 for sale um, and there's 12,000 items. That's one, what is that? Not 1%, but it's not far off 1%. It's like 1.5% for sale. Uh, and obviously these are just for the more common ones. If you can get some rares, you know, like potentially this off for 881, that's a gold. Um, you can go through here and just see this one here, 400 for a silver. 
There's a really kind of like expensive one here. You can actually rename them as well, like this one, which is quite cool. These, I don't know why it seems to be selling for a premium. You've got a bit of a name, but interesting. Yeah, this one's sold for six grand, so three ETH. Yeah, but it's a bit a bit more of a rare because it's diamond. But it gives you an understanding for the potential value of these because this is uh, same for three ETH. So that's, yeah, that puts it in a decent sort of ballpark figure in terms of like the potential of a project, right? It gives you an idea. And the cool thing is, is that there's no like direct ranking on these as such. Like, there's different tiers, but it's not like, um, you know, the NFTs on sort of open, most NFTs on like NFTs through the Ethereum network, they have like a ranking. And I'm sure you could factor in some sort of ranking for it, but it's just nice that it's not necessarily done like that. It's more done on, you know, which dogs do you like? So the interesting thing is, if you have a male, it you won't, you can breed, but you won't actually get the uh, baby. <clears throat> you actually get paid for it, paid for the service. The females can give birth, just like real life and they will keep that nft and it will be like a hybrid between the two which is so cool isn't it you know like and so you could kind of like market the uh you know like play the market and, and collect sort of specific breeds and, and then obviously their off their offshoots are going to be um you know you can potentially hold a premium on that it's just like you know i'm just brainstorming here but to me this is just so cool um it's something that you can just easily do you have to feed it you have to give it water you have to play with it you know, some people might think that's kind of time consuming and annoying, but you know, it's not like you have to put a lot of effort in. It's every couple of hours, just, you know, one minute feeding it, watering it, whatever you want to do, play with it, bath it. Uh, I can't remember all the things you could do, haircut maybe, <laughs> but you know, I just really love it. Um, and potential for me is that this is going to actually blow up. Even if it isn't in 2022 or it's towards the end of 22, it will. I'm going to open see it as soon as it's released because you've seen Solana NFTs, right? They have absolutely just like popped off. Now let's see if there's any in the top. Yeah, you got these three here. You know, the volume in Solana is just, was, was similar or Probably a bit more than it is on Tezos, but it was pretty low compared to obviously OpenSea. And then as soon as um, it pops onto OpenSea, not right away, but over time, the market kind of brought it in under its wing to balance out the value of the projects. If you kind of get what I mean, because if you've got something, you know, that's that's one ETH, and there's a similar project here which is on the Solana. It's kind of kind of it's kind of kind of do that, isn't it? It's just kind of kind of bring it to its market value based on when the market most of the market is and most of the market is on OpenSea and so that's how I feel it's just you know it doesn't mean that it's going to go like that but it's going to balance itself out and find it's like the happy place so that you've got a good balance of value in in the NFTs and something isn't drastically undervalued for example and it does the same thing as say that obviously not even but you know what I'm trying to say so I'm gonna leave it there I think um you know hopefully I've given you a little bit of an understanding uh thought process wise and a little bit of an understanding in terms of the projects you know you can go ahead and check them out of course dog me uh, I really love them just just go ahead and do, look at their Instagram their Twitter get a feel for it it just looks quite cool slick and, and simple to understand ultimately that that is the main thing with NFTs people get so confused what does it do how does it work with this you know it's just an NFT that you hold and you can breed and you get paid and you can yeah do that kind of thing it's pretty easy in my opinion so i'm gonna leave it there hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next video bye